Hi everyone, hi everyone. Today's conversation is going to just be so fantastic. You're welcome to the racism conversation. And today I have a dynamic young man. You just don't want to miss the conversation with Faisal, who is a young student, a young student born in Germany, birth in Germany, speak the German language, and he says he is a German. And of course, where I come from and where he comes from, he says he is a Afro Schwaber. If you know what that means, then you want to stay for the conversation today. And today, we're going to be having a very dynamic conversation because it is about migrant organization and of course, how racism affects the migrant organization hey share the links with your friend i'm very grateful that you're here everyone i'm very grateful ma'am i'm very 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 grateful that you're here and uh, i'm sure that you're going to like this conversation let's wait for a few seconds for our friends coming in Hey, you are not alone. Thank you again, everyone, for joining this conversation. And remember, the reason why we started this racism conversation was because of the death of George Floyd, who died on the 25th of May, 2020. And then suddenly we realized again the effect of racism in our society. And ever since, we have chosen to have a continuous conversation because we believe that it is important to create awareness and today we're going to be having a very very interesting conversation with a young man from the community welcome with me Fasai. Fasai, you're welcome how are you today i'm fine and you i'm very very fine i was so so happy to have your uh, contact and to have this conversation with you and just the few seconds that we shared together i was very very dread i'm very grateful that we are having young people in the community doing an amazing job and that's why hey this is your platform tell us a little more about yourself who you are, what you do, why are you so passionate about the conversation of racism, but more especially tell us how racism affects the growth of migrant organizations. Here's your platform. Thank you, first of all. Um, if I could, I would become red now, like the other people. <laughs> it's, it's an honor for me. And yeah, let me introduce myself. My name is Faisal Osman. I'm 26 years young and uh, I'm studying economics in Nürtingen. I live now in Stuttgart. And the reason I'm passionate is because it affects me. I can, uh, I can hide it. I have a, I had a, I have a other uh, skin color than the most German people. And yeah. I'm a member of the BCF Group Stuttgart. We are founded in the uh, uh, 6th of June, but I will come to that. Because first of all, I want to speak about the, the main topic today. It is um, how does racism affect the growth of migrant organization? And the, first of all, the problem of racism is that racism is separating. And in Germany, it is separating our society uh, in, in migrants and not migrants. It is separating the world in the north and south, in money and no money. And we have to, yeah, we have to end it. It's up to us. And that's my passion. I think I'm, I'm 26, 26 years young. That means that um, I'm the future. And the youth had to stand up and the youth had to say, no, we, want, we don't want to have a future like our, our past. We want a, a future everybody uh, thinks it would be great. And uh, how, I, uh, how I said it, racism about this is about separating, isol isolating. And the problem what comes with that is that uh, as a migrant, sometimes you are treated like a kid. Because uh, in Germany, there's a little problem because um, in Germany, 
to be German or to do something German is higher rated than to do it like a Somali person like me or like a person from China. We have always to meet expectations from other people. And if we, if we don't meet them, we are not good enough. And so we have to deal with um, problems other, other people uh, bring in our life. And, we have, and it's frustrating. That's the main problem. It's a, uh, racism affects our work because it is frustrating. It is hard to continue, hard to find passion every day to say, okay, uh, last time it was not so good, but next time it will be better. Yeah, at the, at the first time it sounds good, but at the thousandth time it, it, it's not the real thing. And in Germany, it, the one problem is that migrants are not really integrated. We are tolerated. Means we are not part of the society. We are just guests guest who, if it works good for the German, go back to their countries. But it's not, it's not happening because I'm from as a, I'm grown up in Germany. I can speak perfectly their language. I know perfectly their culture, but I also speak Somali. I also know my Somali culture. What means I'm the bridge. We the, young, we the youth, we are the bridge. We know our German friends. We know their, their parents and we know how to talk with them. We know what, are, what priorities they have. But yeah, we, we are we're gathering cultures in us and we have to communicate and we have to connect each other. And racism is blocking our future because it is blocking to it, it blocks to think um, of minded. Yeah, it's like I don't know. It's like sailing with headwind, you know. So you 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 get nothing, but it costs you everything. And we want to we want to skip that part with nothing, and we want to get everything. We want a better world. And I don't know how, what kind of people don't want a world like that. But we have to, we have to con uh, connect us, all the good people, and try to be uh, to do our best. And I think that migrant organizations um, are there to connect, but they are treated like separator. They are treated like they would only want to, I don't know, they only want to, yeah, to kill German, to be to kill the German culture. But not that's not the thing. And as I said, me from the sorry. Me, uh, me and 10 others, we, um, we founded the Black Community Foundation uh, in Stuttgart. We are in 20 cities around Germany. And it was the, yeah, the death of George Floyd. I think everybody saw this tape, the video. And it's too much. The, the way the policeman killed it, it was too much. We can't accept it. We are people. We are humans. So we want to treat it like that. And we don't want to fight anybody. We want just to, the, the human rights wrote by the, by the countries. We want that they, they, they do like that. And I think and I hope that we, the youth in Germany, we can, we can be a role model for all the other countries, for all the other, uh, for all the other yeah, societies here in Germany. But I would say that's first of all enough for me. <laughs> Oh, hi, Sai, you're such an amazing young person. I am so, so, so happy that we are having this conversation with a young person. And you said a lot of things that really, really fascinate me. And I just want to get into this conversation with you before we really go to the right, to the real topic of today, right? A conversation of today for those listening to us. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you wherever you're watching, if you're watching from YouTube or again from Facebook. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. We need your support and we are very grateful that you're taking your time to really support this work and who else should do this if not you and myself. We have a young man from Somalia, Germany, and he says that yeah, the migrants in Germany are not integrated. They are being tolerated and he says, they are growing up, they are the youth, they are the future and the bridge because they understand both culture. Now, first I tell me exactly, how do we get to do this? Now, we understand that um, 
you are young people and i am so proud of you because when you speak you speak with a lot of energy with a lot of passion and that's exactly what we want that's exactly what we have been looking for right now tell me how do we want to really become the bridge and how do we through our being the bridge fight or create awareness to the subject of racism in our community Yeah, I think uh, racism is about stereotypes. So what we have to do is to erase that stereotypes because the, the people who are racist, they, they don't know me. They only see my color. And with that color, they associated pictures like that I'm criminal, like that I, uh, I'm selling whatever. And that's the problem. We have to, this misconnection that, ha that happens. I don't know why, because of language, because of... Uh, intelligence i don't know why we are connecting not right but we have to we have to show the art one side of the we we have to show that we are not like that we have to we have to show them that we are better and we we are also human and uh, the other side has to rethink their pictures i and where where they are coming from yeah because the the history shows that the african people are not really, I, I would say, lazy or something like that. They've mm. been colonized. They've been, they've been, they were, there was slavery. Now there are resources mm. there. They're taken by others. So we are not treated like human. And mm -hmm. that the other side should, they should rethink that. And really, racism is stereotypes. That's what the people with like the IFD are playing with. They don't mm -hmm. use arguments. They don't use the truth. The only thing they say is. He's black, he's criminal. So you mm -hmm. have, we have to erase that, erase that picture and create another one, create a new one. And that's what I wanted to do. I want to, do, I'm, I want to be a role model that we, the black people, can reach and do everything other people can do. And I Nick. think that's, what, that's our job, yeah. Yes, that's very good. Now, um, you in your presentation, you said, yes, there's a lot of frustration that come in. And I'm so, so happy because you're mentioning the fact that we have we need role models. We also have to be uh, to give a different picture. Is that our assignment to always give a new image of ourselves and always fight to be this role model so that if the people can accept us for who we are? Or we just say, this is our life, we'll live it the way we want to live. What do you think? I would say yes, but I would add something. I would say it's not only that we have to look to the other side. We have to be true, true to say the truth. We have to, we have to love ourselves. That's our other problem. The black community is not connected. The black community is not working together. I don't know what we all are separating to. But in one, time, in one half, we, are say we, are, we say, well, we're all black. And then if you say, um, uh, then we say, I'm Somali, and you are from there, and you are from there, and you look like that, and you are like that. And that's the problem we have. The other side is we have to love ourselves. We are not um, something like basketballer, entertainer, or something like that. We can be a doctor. We can be a lawyer. We can be whatever we want. But please, please, please love yourself. And other uh, connect with each other. If you see another black person, don't be mean. Be friendly, because we are all brothers and sisters. And I think that should we add, because there are I big like, problems. I like that. I, li I like that. We are all brothers and sisters. Okay, we are going to go to the real conversation for today. But before we go for the, to the real conversation, I want to put some words of appreciation. We have um, Nomad Nomad Law watching from, I guess, South Africa. Hey, Mom, I'm seeing you. Thank you very much. And she says it is not easy to live in other country as Africans, having young people who are voicing out the opinion about racism. Big up, young man. So this is a good applause to you. And I am very, very so proud of you. Thank you for being here too. And we have also Enoma Gilroy, who is saying, vibrant youth, keep it up. 
so proud of you uh just wow. keep going on with the work you're doing and we have adam and who says hey amazing so your passion is carrying everyone along right we have elizabeth yeboa elizabeth is also a start rating so you know what it means and she says yeah. wonderful job so hey you're doing an amazing job let's go back to the conversation of today why i had to call you i know that you are in the black community foundation or well, board um and that's i want to suppose i want to suppose and i want to have my assumptions and uh, you can correct me um that's a migrant organization but i also want to guess that because you're a young person it is a mixed organization now but we have a challenge because migrant organizations have a lot to deal with in germany now the, our question was how does racism affect the growth of migrant organizations yeah first of all it um racism affects it because you can't see racism you don't know who's racist so you don't know your enemy you don't know who you're fighting but uh, the one other problem is that you are always always fall back if you if you reach something then you have to deal again with racism so if you if you help people to 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 brighten up their lives if someone else came uh, will come and be ra be a racist and that's what i said is frustrating and the other the thing is that we can do we can do our job the problem is i always have to deal with racism but there are all there are other problems and sometimes i think um racism is the last cult that people have because if they see that we reach something if they see they can do nothing against that they they pull out their racist card and then they're using it and the problem is that yeah it's easier to hate people i think that to love that's what i learned in germany even especially if they are looking other uh, like other people and i think racism is racism is the main problem but the other problem is that migrants organizations are not really treated right so we from the bcf group i think sometimes i think the people think we are young people who have nothing to do you know we have nothing to do and we are we are bored and now we we, we made a group but the problem is we are more than that and we always have to deal with all oh, you are good and all oh, you are you are funny or something like that but we want to reach something and that's the main problem i think mm -hmm. yeah i think that's the main, main challenge really because um uh, we are not really taking serious, right? That's what you're trying to say, that uh, yes. migrant, some migrant organizations are really not take, being taken serious. And so uh, if we look at racism from the aspect of the fact that it is also the uh, distribution of resources, and we see that most migrant organizations are lacking in certain resources like uh, even the space, the, the office where they can even sit to work together, or again, even having a personnel where they can do a quality work, or again, just having the financial support for their different projects, and even getting information, the right information that most some migrant organizations really do not have the right information. They are also lacking in the network, right? So, um, and that was our conversation to say, hey, Okay. <laughs> Uh, if uh, it it could be because of racism, because they don't take the migrant organization serious as a result of the stereotyping that they are having or that people have or other other organizations have. And so the question will be, how can we uh, create awareness about the potentials of migrant organizations to do an amazing job of breaching the gap and so that we can be able to be taken serious and also do the work that we are called to do especially like young people your young organization the black community foundation would definitely want to do an amazing job we want to really create the bridge so that create awareness in your groups you have germans uh <laughs> i don't know how to put it black skin germans white skin german yellow skin german red skin germans every skin germans is inside that group and therefore right. you want to be taken serious right and so uh the question will be what 
can you we do and how can we really help either the migrant organization or the system to understand the importance of the migrant organizations in the community? Did you get the question? Am I back? Now you're back, yes. Did you get the question? No, sorry. <laughs> okay, now the question is, how can we, how can you, what would you say, um, and how can you counsel the society? We have um, city councillors listening to us here, and maybe after this, other people will be listening to, to the conversation. What should be done precisely so that migrant organizations should also be treated with respect and given the necessary resources, the need to do a professional job of creating awareness? Um. Honestly, I think it's a good question because what, what should we do? I mean, we, we are doing the same thing like the others, but we are not treated like... I think, I think if they really want to help, they would help. It is uh, that they do nothing. It's, it's, like, it's like doing something. You know, if you do nothing, you are not better than a racist. And that's the problem. They have to deal with that. Yeah, because if they not <laughs> generate us the same money, yeah, if we don't get the uh, same resources, that means for mm -hmm. me that you are something like a racist. Because if you are not a racist, you would you would treat everybody equal. So I mm -hmm. think, and that's my opinion, we maybe we should look more to us as we don't have to wait for them. We don't have that. If they want don't want us to give money, we have to connect and we have to raise money. Yeah, that's that's our black the, the black community have to help each other. We don't know. I think they are not much wealthy black people in Germany. Yeah, but mm. everybody is using his money for for things he don't really need. Yeah. So if you so take what are that those money, things we don't really need. Mm -hmm. Maybe cigarettes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Cigarettes. Okay. Cigarettes are killing you, so don't smoke. Yeah. Spend that money for good things. And the, I, I, what I saw is um, the people, the, the people in the in the in the committees in Stuttgart. They always treated us like like not like a person. We are like um, in science, we would say object. Mm. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's the problem. So we we don't have to wait. We have to. We have to create our own future. I don't want to mm -hmm. wait for money from people who don't want give, who don't want to give me money. That's not my jam. That's the frustrating thing again. So we connect and we will do something like a festival. We do something like I don't know. We will generate the money and we will help ourselves. I don't wow. know why we have to wait so for other people. You're just an amazing uh, young guy. Uh, but tell us, I think that we need to know where your background from all this, right? You are studying economics, right? So I hope that you're going to come and then help the community to understand that we really do not have to always wait and get from other people, right? So we have to start creating, right, our own resources, creating our own yeah. systems, creating our own yeah. businesses, creating our own uh, hospitals, schools, why not, right? And because of right. that, we need to support one another and generate that kind of income. Wow, this is and just... we have to educate ourselves. That's the other yes. thing. We have to educate ourselves because education is the key to everything. That's what my mama said, and that's what I learned from the life. And that's oh, the point. Wow. So the reason this is I great. study economics, the reason I study economics is I will, hopefully I can go back to Africa and share my knowledge share my information that's what the, that's the same thing they should do with us now they should if they want to help us then share your information share what you know and help us but let us do the things like we wanted to do we don't wow. want to be good and that's the point tell me what you know but let me do the things like i want and then i we are everybody's cool but i because i don't can't do, i can't tell a german person how to do things because they say Wait a minute, we are Germans. We, we in brief uh, invaded uh, Daimler and Kerscher and Bosch. So I don't want to hear it uh, anywhere. So 
yeah, that's, that's and, my I mean, point. You're just, you're just, you're just too amazing, Fasa. You're just too, too amazing. And everyone is just saying, "Hey, amazing, amazing." I'm so really proud of you. And we're going to disconnect from the original conversation. We're going to care. Someone is asking a question, and I just want you to answer that question because you are born here and you grew up here. And uh, someone is asking, or the inner is asking the question. Um, how do we call you who is born here in germany and uh, you're black skinned or you are colored skin whatever they are calling and all the names they are giving um should we say you're somalian german or should we say you're just uh, a human being or should we say you're a german or should we say you're somalian what is the what's your own identity do you choose your identity or you let people choose your identity for you how do we I go about that I, I do I do everything on my own. Uh, other people don't affect my life. <laughs> so I'm, I would describe myself as a Somali with German passport. So that's Beautiful. what I am. Because we, the, 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 the humans, uh, they said, okay, we, we will separate that world in nations. We also could say, okay, we are everybody who's using his right hand, to, uh, right hand for writing are going to the right side of the world. The others go to the left. But we said, okay, we separate that world in nations. So I'm Somali. So mm -hmm. if you if you know African people, so the people will see that I am Somali because I'm tall, I'm skinny, uh, that's all. And you I'm look Somali. handsome and very I'm beautiful, handsome. right? Thank yes, you, you but are. I think everybody can see that. So hi, <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool with that. <laughs> So that, that, that's the reason are, I didn't mention it. So. You, are, you are such a magic. And of course, Sharon Dassi is confirming what you said. And she says, hey, responding to Eno, I teach my kids that they are Cameroonians born in Germany with the German passport. Thank you so very much. Yeah, that's uh, right, passport. because we are, we are like uh, the Toyota Prius. We are hybrids. Huh? Okay. We are half German and half African. So that's the okay. point. We are not fish now. We are not meat, and that's the point. Yes. And I think never we don't never forget your your background. It's so important. That's what I learned mm -hmm. from my from my parents. Because since the moment I say okay, because if you grown up in Germany, it's really hard. You don't know who you are. You are black, but you are talking German. Yeah, you are looking others, but you are acting like them. And so you are always in a in a conflict with yourself. And the moment I say mm -hmm. okay, I, I'm Somali. That's my main point. But mm -hmm. I live in Germany, so I adopted the traditions here. That was the moment mm -hmm. I was full with, the, with myself and with the, with the world because it, it helped wow. me to find myself and to, and to, yeah, to find the, uh, the world because I live in Germany, but I'm Somali. But that, not, that means not that I, I can't be a good German or I can't be a Somali. I can't be both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is amazing. This is amazing. Oh, great, 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 great. And then we have Margaret. Margaret, you're welcome. You're welcome, Maggie. Thank you so much. And Maggie says something like, as long as we show our togetherness, then we will go far. Not, I think, what people don't know is that most Africans who have German nationality separate them from newcomer African, and I don't think it helps, right? What do you think? Have you observed that too in the community? Yeah, I see it. It's a, it's a problem because, um, how I say, I, I'm grown up here, so you you can see I'm wearing something like that, and I don't I don't wear a hat or something like that. The people who are coming from Africa now, they we it's up to us. We have to help them because I know Germany. I know how to act like you, so. The truth is the who if you are 20 years in Germany, it's like your kid. Because he is a kid. He don't know he don't know Germany, he don't know where to go to grocery, he don't know to, to which bus to take. So he is a kid. He needs help. Mm. So we are mm. we have to help each other. And that's what mm. I said. We, we don't have to but other other side is uh, the people who are coming from Africa now, they mm. have to, to help us. That means mm -hmm. they act right. Help us. Don't be, don't be uh, such they say. Don't act like a black person. Yeah. Don't speak like a black person. Don't, <laughs> don't be like the stereotype they get you. Be your own. We are all proud. We are all proud Africans. We we are funny and we are handsome and we are. What else? We have to do our things, but we have to act right. 
And if we if we act right and help each other, I would say two weeks and we are out of that shit. Oh really? I think oh, so. Yeah. Right. Because that's, that's one thing. I'm 26 years old and I don't want to be 80. And there's a, a racism is still affecting me. Yeah. If you mm -hmm. ask me, I want to I want to be finished with that shit tomorrow. Yeah. <sighs> but that's the that's the point. We have to push it. We have to push it further. We don't have to wait. We don't have to wait and and say, can you help me? No. Can you help me? No. We don't have to wait. So we have to, uh, uh, yeah, we have to connect everybody. Every black people should connect. And then Every black we, people we, we, should connect. Faisal, we have to talk on that act right again, because uh, Wine Free says, good point, act right. Tell us more. How do we act right? What do you call act right? Acting means, right? What is that? Yeah, uh, act right means um, you don't get. You have to earn respect. Nobody's giving you respect for free. That means you have to. You have to show that you are. You have. They have to respect you. Don't go to the street and scream on the scream on the telephone. And you have to respect the traditions. Yeah, because we are something like guests. If you go to the to uh, somebody else's house. You don't act like you want. Yeah? If you go to somebody's house, you act like a good guest. And we are now something like guests here. So don't go out and be like an act like a fool. Go out and be the and you are representing all, us all. Yeah, if I go out, I represent every black person in Germany. Then if I do one mistake, they say every black person is like that. I see one and I know everybody is like that. And that's the problem go we're dealing on, with. Go on, my boy. Just go on with the preaching. Your mother yeah. taught you very well. Keep teaching us now. So you say we should keep acting well. Please keep on the preaching. Someone says, yeah. go yeah. on with the preaching. Tell us what to do. <laughs> what we have to do is um, we want um, how how to transport that. Educate yourself. That's one point. Don't be a dumb ass silly person who go who do what they want and we are not gangster. If we are not cool, we are just not humans. And if you if you want to treat it right, then treat other people right. Yeah? You can't say okay every like because the white people say every black person is lazy, we can go out and say every white person is a racist. Yeah? We have don't we have, we have to do it like we do. Don't affect, don't let affect you, uh, don't let other people's reaction affect you. And you, you have priorities and these priorities you have to keep. And then act right. That means if somebody is mean to you, that means not that you have to be mean. Always show respect. You have to be a better person. If we all try to be a per better person, everybody on his own, we all will be a, have a great future. Because now we are always relating to other people. When all, and otherwise, we, and on the other side, we are saying, but he's doing it like that. So I can do it also. But that's not the point. Yeah? So the media is showing us the black person can be a basketballer, a black person can be an entertainer. No, I say we can be doctor. But it's up to us. It's up to us. We have to educate ourselves. We have to act right. So you can. And the other thing is, if you're acting in Germany like that, what do you want? You want to go back in Africa and act like that again? We don't want you. We don't want people who's not acting right because F the reason Africa is not working is because people are acting how, uh, what like they want and not respecting other people. Other people, and we have to stop that. And everybody has to to try to be to be the best person. And if we all try it, we all be better. We have a better life. That's my opinion. Uh, I am very great opinion. Thank you so very much. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. We have an amazing young guy here today. And he said that we as a migrant organization really do not have to go begging for resources from other people. They can create their own resources. They can create their own future. They can generate their own uh, funds and do the work that they really want to do. And he went further to say that 
he um they are the bridge and we are the bridge and especially the young people who are born here in germany that they are the bridge because they understand the culture they speak the german language they eat the german food went to the german schools so they understand the german culture and of course they are also understanding the culture of their parents and especially their own origin and so they believe and he believes that they are the bridge and if it was left on him if he could change things he thinks that in two weeks if we did right acted right then we can stop racism even in two weeks Pasai, you've just blown my mind today thank you very much let's go to another conversation tell me which books do you read the most and why um <laughs> so the book i'm reading is um in German, it's the Massenpsychologie des Fascismus. So it's the mass psychology of fascism. It is from Wilhelm no, uh, Nice. I would show it. Mm -hmm. I brought it here. That's the okay. book. And Beautiful. the book is about how uh, fascism is, mm -hmm. um, how it is uh, going to the brain of the people. Why, is the, why it is in our world, how it is going mm -hmm. on. And, because that's a, uh, I think, a important point. You have to know your enemy. Yes. That's wow. A point. You have to know it because it's like you, a, it's you a have to know in, your enemy. Okay. Of course, like a good coach in, in in football. If you are a good coach, you're studying your enemy. You you study his weakness, and if you know your weak his weakness, you can win. And that's the point. And that's what I wanted to do. That's the reason I say we have to educate because the, oh, we need information about the people who are affecting our work, who are the racists. Why they are thinking like that? What is the reason? And if, if it's a reason I can understand or is it something I say, okay, that's only because you are far away from the world and also from right mind setting. But, but, but we have to read books. Yeah? We, have to, we have to communicate and we have to educate. Like people like Malcolm X said, yeah, if you want to, if you wanted to, uh, that somebody is helping you, you have to help your own. The only person who you can uh, is helping you is your own. You know? So, yeah, what should I say? Don't wait. Don't relate. To, uh, don't be dependent on other people. Be independent. That's what we all wanted to do. Yeah, <laughs> nobody wants to live by mama with a forty-five because mm -mm. you want mm -mm. to live independent. Mm -hmm. So you have to be independent from everything. And if, if somebody says that's wrong, you don't have to adapt that uh, um, so opinion. You have to think self, by yourself. Yeah? You have to think, am I the, is, this, is it my opinion or his opinion? Can I relate to that? Or, and not say, boy, okay, he said it and I take it like that. Mm. And yeah. and Miri, Miri is around. Miri, you're welcome. And Miri, Mary says, keep your friend close and your enemy even closer. What do you think? Exactly like that. Exactly. I know more about my enemies than about my friends. I think. <laughs> Why? There was a concept because behind I, it. The concept behind it is, um, my friends are just one person. And my enemy are so much more. My friends are easy to explain. So they are humans. They have some interest. They eat. They drink. And we are uh, we have own, our own personalities. It's easy, but everybody has his secret. But they don't have secrets. They don't, they want to affect other people. So so they share they share the information. If you go to the internet, you will find channels full of them. So they are writing, so they are communicating. And if you are like the NSA and get the information, yeah, you, you are very close to your enemies. But the funny thing is they don't know me. Yeah, I know them, but they don't know me. But that will change if I talk so much like that. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to not talk too much so they don't know you very well. And you keep pushing in there. Oh, they, they should know me. They should know yeah. me. I have no problem with that. They should sure know me. I, if they want, I can send them a photo of me with a signature. But they should know me because we will see us, we will meet us, and I will win for my people and for a better world. That's I point. am so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. So let's say, if you were going to be a color, which color would you choose and why? 
Uh, I would be red. Yeah, first of Why? all, because it's my uh, favorite color. Uh, otherwise, it is a strong color, and it's a signal. Yeah, if you we all know if you see if you see something red, it is dangerous. And I, I'm a little bit dangerous. I would describe it. for the racist people, all the others, I'm dangerous. So I'm red. Mm -hmm. I'm like stop it, or you will never see green again. So like, mm -hmm. that's the point. Wow, amazing, amazing. This is an amazing conversation today. I'm very thrilled. Uh, now, if you were an animal, which animal would you be and why? Lion, because he's the king. Easy. Beautiful. Very yeah. easy. And what will you do? I mean, yeah, the lion is a king. Now you have all the powers. What would you do to change things? I would be the best king the world ever has saw. I would be, I would blow the people's mind. I would be fair, but hard. And I would communicate, I would listen to everybody. The thing is, even if you are the king, you are not the important, you are not the important person in their society. If you are the king, you still need somebody who's, uh, who's uh, making clothes. If you're the king, you still need somebody who's baking bread. If you're the king, you still need somebody who uh, built your house. That means if you are the king, you're only the king if you are some people who help you. You can't be a king in your own world. That's not happening. So if you are the king, king means that you have responsibility. And if you can't take the responsibility, you are not a king. Because not God is making a king out of you, you are own. If you can take responsibility, if you are a good person and you are a fair person, I think you are the perfect king. And I would say, okay, cool with me. Uh, cool with me then. Thank you so very much. This conversation today is just amazing. I just like the conversation because um, it is opening our eyes in diverse ways. And it is so, so interesting because you're a young person saying that and you are here, born here, you speak and you know your identity. That fascinates me a lot. The fact that you really know your identity, wherever and whoever your mother is. I say, hey, mom, wherever you are, if you listen to me, Thank you very much for the amazing son that you gave to us. And that may God bless you. We have another contribution from Margaret. And she says, I think there are also Africans who are not educated, also Germans. But what Germans do is that they inform themselves. They can't learn through, they can learn through books. But if you inform them, they then they can defend them out um, there and this is something lacking was that lacking so i guess that um did you get the point she's giving a contribution and thank you very much margaret and i think that yes we really have to educate ourselves and uh Fasal has said that oftentimes that we really really have to educate ourselves and again to summarize what you said Remember, today our conversation was how racism affects migrant organizations. And we defined migrant organizations as those organizations that are being led by migrants, by people who came here or people who are born here and identify themselves with foreign identity and they are leading and managing those organizations. And we said, and the Fasai said that, the challenge that we have is that most migrant organizations are not being treated fairly. They have been seen like children and this, we, we don't have the same respect. Um, and he thinks it is not correct. But on the other hand, he says that we have to create our own wealth, our own resources, so we do not have to depend all the time on other people. He went further to say that most migrants in Germany are not integrated, they are being tolerated, and because of that, they are the new generation with his group called the Black Community Foundation in Stuttgart. They want to be the bridge the bridge between the old and the young, the bridge between both cultures, the bridge to 
create awareness on the conversation of racism and if need be break the bridge so that there be no more racism and he went for that to say racism comes from the point of stereotyping and that people know when you behave poorly as an african then we generalize it all the people generalize it and so he went for that to say we should educate ourselves and we should act right and for him acting right means that you do when you go to a stranger's home and he considered ourselves as being guests here in germany so when you come as a guest and you visit someone you behave naturally right and so if we behave naturally right then we will be able to build a community we'll be able to build our homes and of course when we get back home to us in africa we can develop our continent and make it a better place did i summarize what you said was that what you said that was Perfectly. I would just um, say something about education because education is the gap between Africa and Europe. That's the. It, sometimes the people think it's money, but it isn't money. It is education. It is information. Because in Ger if you are looking in Germany, we have an engineer who is building the car. Then we have people who are making the car and who are taking the screwdriver and uh, build it. And then we have the people who test it. Where, where are the engineers in Africa? Where are the workers in Africa? Where are they? And that workers don't need money, they need books. Books, who, well, books explain you how to become an engineer, what, how to become a worker, right? What, what do you need and what do you want? Everything is books. So if we want to do a favor for, the, for African people in Africa, we have to translate books for them. We have to, we have to they have to read and they have to, to get books. Send all the information so they can help themselves. Because if we are, if you are, if you are dependent on money from Europe, money never comes free. Money, money. All if you get money, you have to do something for that. Yeah, and if it's not your money, then you have to do so for somebody else. And we don't want to do it. We we are finished with that. Five hundred years working for other people. I'm done with that. Yeah, that way. I point. need to tell the people that you are studying economics and you're working at the bank, so you know exactly what you are saying, right? So you know yes. what you're telling us. You studied economics exactly for this purpose to teach the people how to create their own wealth. E e economics is made by the Western world to control the other world because they they oh, they, they invented economics. And they don't share economics. So who, who in Africa knows every, anything about economics? They know nothing. So we are living in a system made by the Western world. And they want, to, they want that we fit the, the, in their world. But no, we have to create now our, our world. We have to go back to Africa and make Africa beautiful. Africa is a beautiful place. I mean, we have so much coast. We have jungle. We have everything. So we would live good there. But what we need is to educate our people we have to be true and go back. And that's the point, though. Thank you so very much, Faisai. And Faisai said also something I can't forget, and I'm taking that home before we are going to come to your last word. I'm taking this home. He said that you should know your enemy, be close to your enemy, but be closer. No, no, you should be close to your friends, but be closer to your enemy. So, and mm -hmm. you are reading a book that is really giving you the system and the tricks now to be able to understand the philosophy of the mind. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, we are having also some commentary for you. Thank you. Eno says, super, great job. We also have um, Boaji who says, very correct. We have... Um, mm -hmm. Jamai, who say very good topic. Thanks, both of you. Well done. And of course, we have Sherry, who says, wow, you're just blowing our minds here. And I thank God for one free, who says, the one with production decides. What do you think? So I am um, not really, uh, because pro pro you, can you only can product something if you have money. You need capital to produce. So if you have no money to buy the resources to, uh, to, to, 
to to sell uh, to give wages yeah to rent a house or uh, i don't know you will never produce something so and that's the point the so big but she says is that the one who produces decides so it means that the one who has the money can produce and when you produce then you have the power to decide so it's exactly what yeah, you're saying but, um, a simple example is uh yeah, but a simple example is um, Africa. Africa got the resources, yeah, but they don't produce it. All right. So we're having maybe some challenge with your um Am your I back? mic. Yeah. yeah, now you're back. <laughs> um. Africa got resources. Or am I? Back, I or? can see you. You are like now. I'm you're back. Alive. If you so, even if you have the, uh, the the money or the or the uh, you are the one who produce, they come and make war. Okay. They will they will take it from you. So mm -hmm. not only production capital is also technology. Okay, that's the point. That's what she, that's Sheena what does. Said. Yes. So mm -hmm. Sheena like Sheena said. Okay, we are not depending on Western world. We don't. We we do everything on our own. Production, capital, technology. They said we don't want it from the Western world. We do it on ourselves, and that's the reason that all the Western world is fearing now China. They fear mm -hmm. China because China don't need them now, and that's the point. And that's and that's China, what we have to do with Africa. And China don't only have the resources; they have the manpower too. And uh, sharing that she says, education and information is the key. And this you it's have said it today over and over and over. But we really have a challenge. I had a conversation with um with a lady today who told me, Vera, do you know that you can put money in a book and give it to an African and he may not see that money? What do you think? Because they don't like reading. If you put money in a book and you give it to someone, he may not even have to read that and get that money because it doesn't really just like reading. And now you have been seeing this the whole of our conversation, how important education is and how important information is. How do you help people who really don't like reading and who really don't like to educate themselves by self-educating? How do we help them? I help them if, uh, if I say you have to, you have to know you better. You have to know yourself better because everybody is interested in something. You don't need to in be interested in economics like me. Yeah, yes. if, if, uh, but if, if somebody would give me a book about, I don't know, say engineering, I, I wouldn't mm -hmm. read it too because I'm not interested. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. like engineering. It's not, my, it's not my jam. So everybody needs to know what I like, what I'm interested in, and then you will find the right book for you. That's the thing. That's but if you are never, never know yourself, you just will, you, you will never go back uh, away from Netflix, YouTube, Instagram. I mean, it is nothing. Instagram, all the people uh, looking at Instagram, but they get nothing from that. Mm. Oh, you've blown my mind today. And would you say book is important, but practical is more important. We must put both side by side. Well, uh, it is, it is similar. The, it goes together. But if you mm -hmm. you can't be practicing something if you don't know, know the theory, uh, that's, that's the point true. I said. You can you can say okay, I just try to build a house. But if you you can after afterwards, who knows if it, if it's really a good house? Or, but if you have a plan, yeah, that's the other thing I learned from in Germany, organization. Mm. Yeah, mm. make a plan, theory. And if, if you have everything uh, you need, theoretically, the practice is easy. Practice is just Thank doing you. what you theoretically need. Uh, Thank you so very much. I like this emphasis, and I want you to tell us a last word. Give. We have many organizations listening to us. People who have organizations are going to be listening to this conversation after this. Tell us your last word of advice. If you had all what it takes, what would you tell us now to do as organizations? Connect. 
connect and help each other. We, if we, if we, if we do it together, we are so much stronger. If you are, all, if you are alone and you want to, I don't know, to build a house, you will take forever. But if you get help from other people, you will be ready in maybe one week, two weeks. But we don't, we don't have enough money if we are alone. Together, we have enough money. We are not that intelligent or as educated on our, on our own. Together, we are like Albert Einstein. So we can reach everything. If you, are, if you are separating, if you are just separating us, everybody is doing something and nobody is noticing something. And that's the problem. Sometimes I have the feeling four or five uh, groups are doing the same, but they don't know each other. They don't know what to do. We can gather more if we are uh, to advertisement together. Huh? Like today, I'm posting it, you posted it, the other posted it, so it will become a range. We have to, we have to connect. We have to, we help out together. So we are all alone, and our life is shitty. So if you are going together, it will be better. That's the point. Thank you very much, Fasai. Thank you very much. You have been such a very inspiration today and you have really blown my mind. I'm very, very happy for this conversation that we have. Again, Fasa is, um, he says he is, um, an, uh, oh, you said Somalia with German passport, passport. I just like that one but he's born in germany and he also is i'm afro swabian afro swabian afro swabian i mean uh, when you hear swabian you should know that it looks like those people that likes working 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 and keeping money to build houses and all that so that, that those are the people right but amazing <laughs> group of people and uh, mm. he said he said um, yes, migrant organizations really have hard times dealing with racism and developing and growing their organizations. But then he gave us a few things and techniques to be able to grow our organizations. And he said, we need to connect together, help one another, support one another. If we do that, we can generate resources for our organizations. We can create wealth for our organizations. And then we do not need the recognition and the dictatorship of any other group of people thank you very much uh Fasai. and um we have come to the end of the conversation do you want to say something again yeah i would say thanks to you for the opportunity and for your platform i think it's really important that we are starting communicating to each other and tell us each other the information we know and i wanted to say thanks to everybody who is watching it is really a, a yeah a honor to talk because i think I need, I wanted to help and I want to share my information, like I said, and I hope we will see us and we will see us all in Africa or we will see us as a equal treated person in Germany. I don't know, but I hope you stay healthy and you, you, yeah, be, be, be yourself. Be yourself. Thank you so very much. Um, for size stay tuned we're going to have a continuous conversation and uh, thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining us today it has been a very very exciting conversation with a young man born in germany and who knows exactly what he wants and i'm sure that you will love the conversation i leave you with this jingle and have a nice day we meet same time next week with another young person to give us the lessons that we need to grow together God bless you.